Hi everyone, I want to share with you my latest project. And yes, I'm sitting on my counter and I have this window blocked to try and get some lighting for you. So, I've been updating my kitchen for the last year and I might do a video on all the things that I did, but the kitchen was 22 years old and had builder grade oak cabinets. So, painted those and the color that I picked uh, I got the inspiration from a few things. I didn't want to go white. I like a little color. And I did end up going with a white backsplash so it worked to have the color. But the color reminded me, and the inspiration I got was I saw a farm sink that was copper. And the color reminds me of patinaed copper or metal. So to finish out the kitchen, this project was the window treatments that I did. And I have the, a window right here over my sink. And then I also have a kitchen nook where I have a very large triple window and two side windows. So this video today is going to show you how I did this window treatment and I'm very happy with how it came out so I hope you enjoy it. So to start this project I asked my husband to build what I call a simple window box. I gave him the width that I needed in this direction and the height that I wanted it to be and also the depth that I wanted it to be. So you can see he just put that together with some brats and the back side of it, again it's just a simple board, actually this is, uh, I picked up the sheet, it's called blonde plywood, it's a 4 by 8 sheet and he cut it down for the different boxes that I needed. So again he just made the sides and then he put a, looks like you know, one by one support piece in each corner. So that's what I call a window box. We're going to start with that. And to determine the height that you want, it's very basically whatever design that you might want to put here in the middle and whatever you might want to put on the bottom for a piece of molding and whatever you want to put on the top for a piece of molding. And as long as you have enough room to attach both of those, then your dimension should be fine. So what I wanted to do is incorporate just this beautiful embossed wallpaper that I found. Because I painted my cabinets kind of a gray-green, and the more that I thought of the color, it reminded me of a patinaed copper. So I thought, if I get something that's embossed, then maybe I can simulate a patinaed copper. And that's what I've done here. I just took that beautiful embossing, and I used a metallic paint, to do the background and then I took my cabinet color and dry brushed it on some of the relief aspects of it. So super simple. As a matter of fact, this was my first attempt and I'm just in love with it. Now this is some wallpaper that I found on Amazon and I'll put the link out there for you. And you can see um, it's bigger than what I need. So what I'm going to use is the center section of it that has like a top beading and a bottom beading and that beautiful embossing on the center of it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that part out and show you my steps for this. So before I cut the center section of the wallpaper, I do want to go ahead and show you the moldings that I have picked out. So like I said, I'll use that wallpaper section from the top beading to the bottom beading and I'll cut the excess. I'm going to leave a little bit because I want the molding to sit on the wallpaper and I think that'll give a better finished product. But I wanted to show you, so here's the top molding that I picked out and this is actually just a wall molding, not a crown. Sometimes the crowns um, don't work if your windows are close together and I do. This is in a nook so I'm going to have two side windows and the crowns when you cut the miter to make that corner, they'll protrude too much because, of course, on this end, you're going to have that angle for the crown. So sometimes I just stick with a uh, wall molding, and that seems to make the construction go a little easier. And then I picked up just um, a piece of, I think they actually call this a bead as well. So just, you know, a little trim piece. It kind of simulates what's on the bottom of the molding to kind of finish out the project with a little piece of molding on the bottom. So again, you know, just decide what you want to do for your center design and calculate what you want that height to be and build your simple window box. I mean, he cranked these out in no time. 
and um, now I'll go ahead and try and get this wallpaper the way I want it. Okay, now that I've cut the section of wallpaper that I want, I'm starting to put them on the boxes. So here's the first one, and what I decided was the best thing to do was to cut it, line it up, so if you have a center in your design, make sure that you get that lined up. And, you know, if it's not specific, don't worry about that, but, you know, if you have an up and a down, now's the time to decide which is going to be right side up and which isn't. So what I did was I placed it on the board like this one. And then I lined it up the way I wanted to, and I tucked the end over the edge. So by tucking it, it kind of tells it where I want it to be, all right? Then what I did was I unfolded, pulled back the wallpaper piece, pulled back the wallpaper piece, and that edge, of course, would hold it. So then I took some Mod Podge with my foam brush, and I put it along the back side of the wallpaper, all the way down, but actually I put it on the wallpaper. So I put it down on the wallpaper, and then I was able to spread the wallpaper across the board. Then, because you can still reposition it a little bit, I took my lower piece of molding and put it on the board as well and lined it up because if you remember, I want mine lined up with that bottom bead on the wallpaper decoration. So I put it on there and I could shift this if I needed to and honestly, that edge held it down so tightly I didn't even have to shift it. So now I'm going to let the Mod Podge dry a little bit. And I'm going to do, I have three of these this size, and I'm going to knock those out before I do the big one. So that's one of three. And of course there's the room for our top molding when we get to that point. So here we have the constructed window cornices with the wallpaper glued. And that's pretty much dry. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip those over and I'm going to paint the back side white. And I'm doing that because these are going to be positioned kind of high uh, near my kitchen table. And I'm afraid people would be able to see the back side of them. And I don't want them to see that raw wood. So I'm going to flip these over and paint them white. Here are the three eight foot pieces of the lower molding and the three eight-foot pieces of the upper molding. And the lower molding is just regular pine. The upper is primed pine, only because my husband doesn't like to work with MDF. And of course, you don't need to spend the money on stain, stain grade unless you are going to stain these. I'm painting it white to match the existing trim in my kitchen. So these should paint up pretty quickly. And again, those are going to accent the wallpaper on the corn sports. So, moving along. Okay, now that I have the backs painted white, just in case someone can look up the back of them, I'm ready to paint the front of the wallpaper with my metallic spray paint. So, I've got everything outside here, and luckily it's just barely over 60 degrees here today. And I'm going to take my time and try and get at the raised embellishment from each angle It'll probably take me two coats just like you do a wall you can't just do up and down you kind of have to do the w and get it from different angles to make sure you get good coverage so that's my goal today is to get these guys sprayed two coats probably about an hour between maybe a little longer since it's colder today and uh the first step on uh actually getting this wallpaper to look the way i want it to look i'm excited So I finished painting with the metallic paint, and I didn't have to wait an hour between coats. Actually, um, the sun came out, and it's very forgiving, and you can actually wet coat right on top of it. So I probably went about 10 minutes between coats, but now I'm definitely going to give it an hour, maybe an hour and a half before I dry brush on top of it. Uh, that's something I definitely want to make sure this is dry. But I have to tell you, I am so in love with this metallic paint on this wallpaper. 
the effect that it has is just so much better than I imagined. It just gives that um, look of that this is actually a metal cornice. So, of course, there's lots of different colors. I think this one's um, an aged copper is what this one's called. But I, you could stop right here. You could stop right here, and you could use this for a number of different things. Again, my inspiration for this project was a copper farm sink that had this beautiful embossing on the front of it. And I can just see using this for a number of applications, but just so, so in love with it. And I hope this inspires you for something. I'm trying to get really a good sense of the metallic look of it. I think you can see it there. So again, these are just pieces of wallpaper that I cut off this roll and, you know, put on these just very simple rectangular plywood boxes. And I think they're just going to make a gorgeous window treatment in the kitchen. So I've been out here now doing my dry brushing. So here was the sample that I did that I just loved with the metallic spray paint and then I was dry brushing my cabinet color. So I got my can of cabinet color paint and I was taking my brush and dipping it in some paint and tapping it on a towel or even just dragging it across a spare piece of the wallpaper that I had. And here is that technique close up, just to give you a sense of just how pretty it is. So after getting the wallpaper painted the way I want it, today we are putting the molding on the boxes. So you see we've put the small molding, which is the bottom, on, and my husband very kindly cut those miters for me. So that's the bottom, and that's just on with some brads, and then a little bit of filler, and I'll go over and repaint those. So those are the bottom pieces, and then of course we've got the top molding that we'll put on, and that's for the biggest window piece, and then the top moldings for the smaller windows, and same thing. Those are cut with a miter corner and we'll just finish out those window boxes. So we've assembled most of these. Um, we're going to have to do a little modification for the one over the kitchen sink. But with the moldings on here, oh, I just couldn't wait to show you how excited I am about how these turned out and the effect that they have. Um, it's going to look a little different in this lighting versus the lighting tomorrow when we put them up, but I just wanted to go ahead and show you what these look like. And here they are a little closer. Again, you've got that metallic look with that dry brushing and the top and bottom moldings painted white as a contrast. Oh, and they're just so, so pretty. So here we have the final product installed. And I am so excited for this window treatment. It turned out just like I imagined and really, I think, pulls a lot of elements together in my kitchen. So let me show you. The lighting is very tricky, so I'm actually going to give you an overview here. But then I'm going to get closer because the way it looks in person is even different than what I see through the camera. Even though I'm really trying to get the lighting just right. So here you go. This is with all the moldings installed. This is put up on the windows. And again, I've kind of incorporated this metallic look and I have um, some dark copper elements in an adjacent family room. And then of course this is my cabinet color that I've dry brushed on here. And it just brings together a lot of elements. So I'm very happy with this. And if you want to do something similar, I hope this video, there we go. I mean, just, just beautiful. I hope this video helps you out. And of course, if you have any questions, 
put them in the comment section. But this is a project that I'm very, very happy with. So that video was a little longer today, so thank you for your patience. And if you enjoy my project, subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time.